If you have a copy of God's Word with you, I ask that you turn to Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. And once you find that, I ask that you turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and just hold that for a minute. And we'll begin reading here in Joel chapter 2. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for is it nigh at hand. A day of darkness and a gloomness, a day of clouds and thick darkness as the morning spread upon the mountains. Then over in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. May God add his blessing to this portion of the reading of his word.
Let us go to the Lord. Father, I ask right now that you send the great physician. We need him. Lord, we have one in our midst that needs that touch. Please, dear Lord, touch this person in Christ's name. Amen. One night, many years ago, I had a dream. I want to tell you a little bit about this dream. When I worked at the Manning Corporation up here on number one, we had a machine. We only ran it a few times a month. And this machine put out a lot of heat. It was called an extruder. It melted plastic pebbles. And it went through a machine and it melted the plastic onto some cloth. And it would go through these cylinders that was filled with ice cold water. And it would stick to the cloth. And then it would go out the other end and wrap around tubes and we would it would be 50, 60 feet of material that was used in headrests and door panels. During the summertime, it could get unbearable inside the plant. In this dream, it, we were running this machine and it was so hot that I decided to open the door to just look outside for a moment. And as I looked outside, I could see gray clouds rolling in. And the wind was blowing very hard. And the clouds and the outdoors was getting darker by the socket. The other feathers, out there that worked there with me, they came to the door and they looked out and they became quite scared. And they began to ask me, Carl, what's going on? These fellas that I've worked with never has ever showed signs of being scared. The question they kept asking me, Carl, tell us what's going on. I could see the look in their eyes and see the voice of them and I realized they was very, very scared. And all of a sudden the clouds had a great big hole to appear in it. And in the center of that cloud it was real, real bright. And the fellas kept asking me, Carl, tell us what's going on. You know something that you're not telling us. What is it? What's going on? I told these fellers many times that there's coming a day that the Lord was going to come back. But they laughed at me. Ah, oh, we've heard that. There ain't nothing to that. They just laughed me to scorn. And now for some reason, I felt like I was about to leave this place that I was working at. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I found myself being pulled up in the sky. And before I knew it, I was in the air looking down and seeing these bunch of fellows saying, Carl, tell us what to do. But I was unable to speak. The harder I tried to speak, the useless it became. I could not speak a word. As I went past the clouds, and I, as I continued to go past the clouds, I was so happy. 
I've never felt that happy in my life. Even in this dream, I was happy. And then I got to looking around and I seen other people coming up through the clouds. And then I knew. I knew that I was experiencing the rapture. I knew this was it. And I said to myself, I'm finally going to get to see it. It has finally happened. And there's billions left behind, like my friends. And I remember looking on their face and seeing the, the fear that they had on it. And I woke up. That dream seems so real. You've had dreams like that. As I lay there in my bed, I could not help but feel for these fellows. For you see, all but one was really saved. There was only one there. And I had been working with them for six years with little or no progress at all. We talked about the church. We talked about Christ. We talked about heaven. We talked about hell. But no progress. And as I laid there, I began to pray to God. And I called out each one of those fellows' name, asking God to save them before it was everlasting too late. Two of them have died since I worked there. I know for certain that one of them never received Christ as his savior. I've talked to him one on one and he kept putting excuses up. But he died without Christ. In that dream, I had mixed emotions. I was happy on one part that I was going to heaven. And I was sad on the other part because I was leaving these fellers behind. I want to preach today on this subject, why I believe in the rapture. Do you believe in it? The rapture of the church is to happen before the tribulation period starts. As born again believers in Jesus Christ, we do not go through the tribulation period. We do not. God takes us away before that period begins. But I found out that many born again believers have given up on the rapture. I've heard many of them say, I've heard it all my life. And things are just like they've always been. They've given up. But each passing day will closer and closer than we were before. This week, while it being in Jacksonville, Florida, I began to think about this world and what's going on in it. Have you watched China lately? China's getting more and more aggressive. They are all over the Pacific now. They tap into our secrets. They sabotage us. They're getting more and more aggressive. I believe they're responsible for this pandemic. I believe they was working on some kind of weapon, a biological weapon to turn it loose. And I think they did it. I think it may have slipped out. And we've had millions across the world who've died from it. I believe they're responsible for that. I think they've seen a weakness in our new administration. And they're moving with boldness. Russia has always been up to something. You never could trust them. And they're even getting bolder 
in Boulder. I keep up with the news, folks. I read the paper. I'm on the internet. I want to be informed at what's going on, and you need to, too. And North Korea, they've gone back to testing rockets that one day could be, have a nuclear weapon capable of hitting the U.S. They even talking about they could detonate a nuclear weapon 400 miles above the center of this country and take out our electric grid and set us back to the 1880s. Folks, we're living in some very, very terrible times. Have you checked out the grocery store prices lately? Now, when I go to the grocery store, my first stop is the cookie aisle. Now, I don't care if ground beef gets $12 a gallon, but when chocolate chip cookies get $3, the kind I buy, I worry. Because that means Linnell's gonna get hungry. I'm gonna have my chocolate chip cookies and milk. But have you noticed the prices I went the other day. I couldn't get over what I was looking at. There was a lady right beside me. And she was talking, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I got children to feed. And of course, I like to be funny, folks. I can't help it. I like to tell jokes. I said, well, if it gets too bad, I'll go into prostitution. I told that one time to Linnell, and she said, well, you won't make a lot of money. <laughs> I said, but I'm going to offer a rebate. <laughs> but we were sitting there. She said, I don't know what I'm going to do. She said, I've got kids. And I said, ma'am, I, I feel for you. I said, I've noticed lately, too. I said, I come home, I said, well, did you know how much pork chops Carl, I've been trying to tell you? And now the shelves are beginning to get empty. Folks, things are getting bad. Now out there in the ocean, we got tankers sitting out there waiting to unload their product, but there's nobody on the port wanting to work. So it sits there. You know, last year at this time, gas was under $2 a gallon. In most places, it was $1.70 a gallon. I can remember down there at the gas station before you hit I-95, right out of, before you go into Florence, it was $1.47. In 10 months, it has now averages $3.30 a gallon. And it's expected to be $4 a gallon by Thanksgiving. Since January, the government has stopped the pipeline. Millions of gallons of oil stopped. Thousands lost their job. They stopped fracking, and there's no new leases offshore for drilling. Once again, we happen to be at the mercy of OPEC. It used to not be that way just a short time ago. Our country's in the red for 20 trillion dollars, not billions, trillions. You can stack a hundred dollar bill on the ground. It will reach place Pluto, Pluto and still keep going. You'll never pay that debt off. It's not if the stock market's going to crash, it's when. All these guys and, and, and girls that's got this financial brain that can tell you, all of them are saying, it's just a matter of time. And the church, and the church is getting more and more secular by the Sundays. Preachers come to the pulpit dressed like they're going to a sporting event. Then preaching. Now I'm old school, I can't help it. 
behind the pulpit, I still believe in a suit and tie. Some may say, well, that may drive away some of our young folks. Well, I disagree with that, because I'm wanting to tell you something. The old priests, when they went into the Holy of Holies, if they did not dress right, God killed them. We should respect the pulpit. And I believe that we should be at our best, I'm talking about preachers, at our best dress where we come to present the news that God loves you. When a, stand, when a preacher standing in his pulpit, he should respect it the same way. So many things are wrong now. From the highest office in the land to the smallest pulpit in the country, things are getting bad. And I believe if the Lord don't come soon, that we all going to make a mess. And if he don't come back soon, I don't know what he's going to do with his bride because she may be unfit. I'm telling you now that I believe more than ever that the rapture is just around the corner. There's four reasons why I believe in the rapture. You might want to take notes. I'm so glad that Sister and Catherine has led that little space on the back of your bulletin. You can take notes. One reason is because I believe the Word of God teaches the rapture. In the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 1, that I read earlier, this when he says, the day of the Lord, ooh, I'm going to tell you, says right there, he, he, he said, blow ye the trumpet and sound the alarm in the holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh. Now, when you see that in the Bible, Something getting ready to happen. And we live in a time now where things are happening. I don't know how Christians are going to make it much longer. We made fun of. We're the joke now. Did you know that your preacher is considered a domestic terrorist? <laughs> I'm proud to be one. Hey. Yeah, I'll tell them. Yeah, I'm one. And you know the reason why I'm considered a domestic terrorist? I buy books about the end times, and I study prophecy. I found that out. I don't know if you're too happy about a domestic terrorist in your pulpit, but that's what I am. And it's getting worse. What is it like? What's it going to be like when that moment comes? We hear the trumpet and we leave this place. People are going to be terrified. Husbands are going to be missing. Wives are going to be missing. People's going to disappear right in front of people. Planes are crash. Trains are run without a conductor. Cars are wrecked. People on the operating table have disappeared. People doing the operating is going to disappear. It's going to be a day of terror. Now I will tell you this, over in China, they won't even know it happened. They won't even know. And most of Europe won't even know it happened. Because there's so few Christians in that part of the world. But here in America, Let's just say 10% of the population disappears. That's 36 million people that got to be replaced. 20% 20 would be 72 million. And they say there's about 33% of the American people that are born again. Can you imagine the chaos that's going to happen? Oh, it's going to be a terrible time. People will tremble in their shoes. But I want to tell you something. The old prophets taught about this. They even taught about the rapture way back yonder. They knew a little bit about it.
The old prophets remember Noah. There was Noah. If you read the story, he started building the ark. He said, it's going to rain. It's going to rain. <laughs> they laughed at him. They made fun of him. 120 years he kept hitting away at that ark. He finally got all the animals in. And I like this part. It says that God shut the door. God was in remote control long before Sears came along. He shut the door. And I bet those people out there got to laughing and making fun of Oh, Noah, how can you stay in that thing? It stinks. And I bet they put trees up against that thing and keep it from the door opening back up. But you know what? I think while they was all gathered around making fun of him, that one gigantic raindrop fell. Just one. And, but it really wasn't a raindrop. It was a tear from God's eyes because he knew what was getting ready to happen. And I believe that thing hit the ground and it made a loud thump. And a few minutes later, it started to rain. They've never seen it rain before. Next morning, it was ankle deep. The next morning, it was up to the knees. And they began to try to climb on those trees that they pushed against the door. And when they got to the top, they couldn't grab nothing. And they began to fall off. And finally, the last one climbed the highest mountain. And way off in a distance, he could still see the ark. And finally, the ark was gone and he drowned. The ark was a type of rapture. Oh, there was Lot. I like Lot because he reminds me of so many of us at times. He was a worldly Christian. He lived in a city where it was a terrible place to raise a family, but he chose to live there. You'd never find anywhere where Lot ever witness to anybody. He never told him about his God. Two angels came. We get ready to destroy this place. You better get your family and get them out of here. He went and told his two sons-in-laws. They laughed him to scorn. You trying to tell us and look at what you do. You sit there at the gate of the city every day. You never tell them about God. Huh. But you know something? Those angels had to grab Lot and his wicked daughters because, see, they seen what was going on down there. And later on, they acted just like the people they've seen. And they grabbed them by the hand. But old Lot, his wife, she wanted to see how the soap opera ended. And she turned around and she turned to a pillar of salt. The removal of Lot was a type of rapture. Lot, even though he was a worldly Christian, he still belonged to God. And then there was Elijah, the man of God. Went up to heaven in a whirlwind. My father used to tell me there's not but one thing better than a Cadillac, and that's a fiery chariot from heaven. <laughs> and he drove it to heaven. Oh, does the Bible teach about the rapture? Because the signs of the times declare it's rapture time. You look in Timothy chapter, 2 Timothy chapter 3, perilous times. Look around. Has the world changed a lot in the last 20 years? Has it changed a lot in the last 40 years? Has it changed a lot in the last 60 years? Nasty talk is common today. You go in a grocery store, you better take earplugs. People talk nasty. And it's common talk. It's a terrible time in which we live. 
the Bible says these things are going to happen just before he comes. Folks, it's getting worse. Up in Virginia, these parents are fussing with the school board. Did you know they want to teach kids how to have sex? They want to do this. They want them to understand how to have homosexual sex. They want to teach that if you want to be, if you're a little boy and you want to be a little girl, that's okay. It's okay. You can do that. And, uh, and I just have to say it, Terry McCullough, who's the governor there, who's an idiot, says that the parents don't have the right to tell the teachers what to teach. And he's ahead in the polls up there. It's just a matter of time. It can't go on. If Jesus doesn't come back soon, what are we Christians going to do? It's terrible. Sin has gotten flagrant now. People don't, there's no shame no more. I've told you many times, go to Walmart at night if you got the nerve. I'm telling you now, you don't, it's unreal what goes on at these stores at night. Get on the internet and pull up Walmart. The other day, a man came to Walmart shopping in the nude. Yeah. Yeah, let him in. And he was shopping away. Now, folks, that's the culture of today. Sin has got uh, flagrant. People just, they don't hide it no more. I don't know what time it is. I'm trying to wind it down. Because souls are headed for hell, and they need to hear about the rapture. Did you know in most pulpits today that the rapture has never been preached? Never have. I had an aunt that went to church and they was talking about the rapture. And she was telling my mother, this was Northside Baptist Church. Jack Hudson was pastoring then. Tremendous pastor. She told my mother, she said, did you know that Jack Hudson's a false prophet? Mama said, why do you think that? So he's a tremendous preacher. She said that the Lord was coming back after his church. <laughs> she thought he was talking about Jack Hudson's church. <laughs> she said, no, no, no. All of his churches. And she looked at my mama and she said, Doris, what's the rapture anyway? Been in church all of her life. Never even heard of it. Folks, if the Bible talks about the rapture, don't you think churches need to preach it? Yes. We get up there and we have our sermons all, do that up, all, everything, prompt. But we never talk about the rapture that's soon going to come. And the reason I know it's to come because this good old book says it's going to come. It's our duty to tell those that are without Christ what's going to happen when that moment takes place if they're not ready. It's going to be a terrible time to be here on earth. It's going to literally be hell on earth. Oh, I'm telling you, you got two choices. You can accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. And when the rapture comes, you're going to be free of all the, the, the hell that's going to be let loose. Or you can stay behind and starve to death. Because you see, you're going to have to have a mark in order to buy, sell, or trade. Now, if you like to drive a car, you ain't going to be able to buy gas. If you don't have the mark, and if you like this, and you like to chow down, you're going to get skinny real quick. But if you take the mark, 
You are doomed forever. There's no hope for you. You will end up in hell. Now, folks, have you noticed that some of these stores now are wanting people to wear a badge saying that they have had their booster and their uh, shots now before you can come into a store? Have you noticed their shape of stars? Didn't the Jews have to wear a yellow star? Folks, I'm telling you, it's repeating itself. But it's going to be a terrible time. Thank God, January the 4th, 1976, I invited Jesus into my heart, disappointing him many, many times. But he's never left me. He's never forsaken me. And I'll be with him throughout eternity. And you can too. And then lastly, because God loves you so much that he offers a way out for those who listen. You don't have to go through this. You can go up when we go up. People, I believe more than ever, never before have I felt this way, that some dark days are coming to our nation. I believe the dark clouds are rolling in. I believe we're living the last hours according to God's timepiece. The Bible tells us it would be just like this when the Lord comes in the air and we go up to meet him. Jesus even said it would be in the days of Noah. Just what was going on in Noah is going on right now. Violence everywhere. It's happening right now. Paul even told us that in the last day, perilous times will come. That word perilous means dangerous times. Oh, I tell you, I'm a pistol-packing preacher. <laughs> Somebody bothers me in the wrong way and I feel threatened, bang, bang, shoot them up. <laughs> Somebody come knocking on my house at night, late at night, I'm gonna tell the nail to go to the door. <laughs> Matthew Gospel tells us that many will be killed and hated because of Christ's name. We Christians in Africa, and in closing, in Africa, millions of Christians have been killed just for being Christians. I'll say it again. Jesus has to come in a hurry. Oh, I don't know what we're going to do, but I believe he's on the verge of coming. And one day, one night, the old cloud's going to open up. And I hope that it opens up and I can grab the nail by the hand and we can go through the roof and meet you and you and you in heaven as we leave this world goodbye. Now, what are you going to do? Are you here today and you've never accepted Christ? And you want to live in this? Hmm. But you can come today and say, I want to be saved. I want to trust Jesus as my Savior. And when he comes back, you out of here. God, we ask that you bless this invitation. Lord, you know that we can't take much more. We've enjoyed freedom too long. And Lord, it's slipping away. The church is getting silent. But Lord, I pray as long as I got breath that I can tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. Bless this invitation, for we ask it in Christ's name. Amen.